everyone, and welcome to today's Seed World Innovation Series webinar. My name is Alex Martin, and I serve as an associate editor for Seed World, and today I'm happy to be your host. Today's theme is stimulating plant performance through seed treatment enhancement. I'd like to take a minute to thank Stoller for partnering with us on today's Innovation Series webinar. Presenting the webinar today is Rob Jarek, the Market Development Technical Agronomy Manager for Stoller. Rob manages the U.S. agronomy team. He's been an agronomist for Stoller for five years, working with multiple crops to improve overall yield and quality. During the presentation, you'll likely have some questions for our speaker. Uh, please type these into the chat box at any time during the webinar, and we'll address them during our Q&A session we'll hold after Rob finishes his presentation. Also, we want to let you know that today's webinar is being recorded and will be made available at seedworld.com following the proceedings. We'll also be sending out an email with a link to the webinar for everyone. Biostimulants are getting a lot of attention in the marketplace. Today, we're going to learn how biostimulants can be used as a seed treatment. In doing so, we'll also learn how a minimal seed treatment investment can result in positive ROI and the importance of managing plant hormone balance for greater yield. Uh, with that, I'm going to let Rob take it away so he can teach us more about biostimulants. So, Rob, uh, have at it. Thank you, Alex. Yield, quality, and profitability. As producers, these three things we focus on uh, and invest the most importance into to ensure our success as, as farmers. As a crop advisor, I prioritize these three items when giving any advice to a grower. So what we're going to learn about today is a little bit about how we can have influence on uh, these three areas, yield, quality, and performance, or and profitability, to ensure that uh, you get the most out of the seed that you're putting in the ground. So if we think about yield in its very basic form, it's a component of plant density or plants per acre or per hectare, depending on the uh, uh, area you're working in. Seeds per plant and seed size. So when is the one time, if you think about it for a second, during the growing season that we can positively affect all three of these components of yield? Well, really, it's before it begins, right? Um, and, and by doing so, or, or at planting, before that seed begins to germinate. And we can do this by having correct seed treatment uh, or inferral program that we uh, apply to our crop to help it get the most vigorous start, get the most seeds and plants out of the ground as possible. We've made that investment into the seed. We know there's a lot of genetic potential there. Let's not lose some of that genetic potential by not giving it the type of start that it needs. So I want to talk just briefly about genetic yield potential versus actual yield. So if we look, uh, I mean, it's no no secret. I mean, we've got uh, world records of over 500 bushel corn per acre harvested, soybeans over 170 bushel yield uh, world record. But how do we get from where we're producing today in this uh, call it 50-ish bushel per acre soybeans or 170-ish bushel corn, what, what's that gap? What's, what's causing uh, a lot of our yield loss, if you will? Um, and a lot of it can be attributed to stress or the growing environment. Now, this comes from a multitude of different areas, from nutritional deficiencies to water stress, high heat temperatures, insects, pests, things of that nature that, that affect our plant. And one of the things that uh, we look at here and, and we'll differentiate between as abiotic and biotic stress. Now abiotic stresses uh, can basically attribute to up to 70% of this yield loss that we're dealing with. 
Now, what is an abiotic stress? An abiotic stress is a stress that a plant goes under because of the conditions it's growing in. Biotic stress, by comparison, is one that a plant just naturally has as it transitions through its life cycle. And it's the abiotic stress that we really try to focus on and try to manage and control there. So if we're gonna start this plant out correct, I mean, obviously we wanna protect the seed. We've spent the money on it. We wanna ensure that it's, it's gonna have the best chance to perform and get the most out of the genetics that we've purchased. Now, fungicides, insecticides, and inoculants are commonly applied to, uh, to our crops, especially as a, a fungicide insecticide would be on most any seed that you're going to purchase. But what about biostimulants? More specifically, what is biostimulant and why would I want to use one on my seed? So there are a lot of different biostimulants on the marketplace. Uh, I'm going to focus on kind of four of them here and just touch briefly on them. Um, one that catches a lot of attention is a biological or microbial inoculants. Now this is where we're basically applying a live bacteria uh, or uh, to our seed. We're putting it in the soil and then hoping that it populates that soil and we get a beneficial effect from that microbial uh, inoculant. There are some challenges that come with adding this type of a seed treatment. And, and as a producer, I always question myself is, as I put this inoculant on there, how do I know that it's going to be alive and, and thriving once it gets into that environment? So we really got to pay attention when we choose to use a product out of this market space that we're, we're following the directions so that we, we get the best chance of this microbial being uh, effective and getting, giving us a yield benefit. Then we have seaweed extracts. Now there's a lot of seaweed extracts in the marketplace. Um, seaweed extracts can be beneficial. There are a lot of trace elements that'll come along with a seaweed extract applied as a seed treatment potentially. Um, a lot of seaweeds will also claim uh, PGR type effects that you'll see growth benefits out of and, and things of that nature. But as we work with a seaweed extract, the one thing to keep in mind is that we are taking an extract from a live living organism and whatever growing conditions that particular uh, uh, source of that extract was growing in is going to have an influence on how well that extract is going to perform as we apply it as a seed treatment. Another option and, and one that's used uh, to some degree and we, we use uh, in some of our products as well is using micronutrients or trace elements. Um, it's a great way to apply something that is needed in a small amount and ensure that when that seed starts to germinate, it doesn't have to go very far in its soil rhizosphere to find the nutrients uh, that it's needing to, to thrive and, and be productive. And then we've got plant hormones or otherwise called PGRs. Now, this is an area that we, uh, we focus on a lot at Stoller. Um, it, it is an area that I think is most important, not only for the start of the season, but understanding plant hormone, the plant hormone cycle and balance that needs to be maintained within that plant for overall vigor and productivity of the growing season. And if you think about plant hormones, a seed that's asleep or a seed that's in our bag is high in ABA versus gibberellic acid. Now it takes uh, growing conditions that tend to have adequate moisture and optimal temperatures for that seed to begin to develop enough gibberellic acid so that it germinates and basically suppresses the ABA. So having a seed treatment that has a gibberellic acid component, much like one we'll talk about our fortified stimulate here later in this presentation, um, really gives that seed the added gibberellic acid it needs to germinate without giving it too much to have negative effects. Okay, so we've got four categories we looked at. Well, what type of benefits do these biostimulants bring? Well, and this is can, can not from any one specific category of biostimulants, but these are, these are basically things that we tend to see from biostimulants. Now we'll have quick emergence. That's one thing we always want to target. 
Uh, we've done a lot of research that would indicate that 90% of your yield is coming off of the seeds that germinate or, and emerge from the soil in about a 36 hour period. Now that's not 36 hours after planting, that's 36 hours after the first seed cracks the soil line. So we wanna have all of those seeds come up as, as evenly and as quickly as possible. Another benefit that we'll see from biostimulants is enhanced root development. Um, why is this important? Well, obviously we've got a small little root system that's, that's starting as this, this seedling begins to uh, its life cycle. And the more fine root hairs that we have that develop, the more nutrients because it is, because it is these fine root hairs that all of our nutrients are picked up in the soil. And if we've got a lot of fine root hair development, we're exploring more of that soil. If you look at the average plant, we'll explore roughly about three and a half percent of that soil rhizosphere. And so if we can increase root mass and root growth, say by 20 or 30 or 40 percent, it would be conceivable that we could now say we're exploring, you know, maybe four, four and a half, maybe five percent of that soil rhizosphere versus uh, what we would normally normally see. Increased in early season plant vigor. Uh, that is one benefit that we'll typically see from seed treatments, uh, especially as we work in some of our colder soils, either we're, for, we're pushing the envelope on the early side of planting or we're in a northern environment that the soil temperatures uh, just are slow to warm up in general we see an increase in plant vigor as a result of, of uh, having a biostimulant on our seed. Again, nut increased nutrient availability and uptake, that, that comes right back to that root growth factor I talked about a second ago. Um, but if we've got a bigger root, the more nutrient available, uh, availability we'll have because the roots are out there exploring and picking up the nutrients that are in our soil. The other thing we'll see because of uh, this larger root system is we've got a higher tolerance to uh, stress, you know, mitigating stress and managing stress through that season, um, largely tying back to the plant hormones. Uh, cytokinin really helps as a stress manager, if, uh, and that's largely produced in that fine root hair development that we see on a plant. Um, we look at improved disease tolerance. Obviously, a plant that's strong, big, and healthy, much like ourselves, uh, we're going to be healthier. We're going to be able to fight off diseases more effectively. So it's kind of a, a, a side effect or secondary effect, if you will, of um, this, plus many more. I could continue on for the next half hour if I wanted to, but I'll, I'll kind of cap it right there. Is some of the key benefits that I see uh, from use of biostimulants uh, in our crop uh, cycle as a seed treatment. So at Stoller, uh, we've got two products that we typically recommend for seed treatment application. I will say both of these products can be used as a seed treatment. They also can be used as foliar applications. One thing that, that uh, we've learned is that seed treatment is where it starts or the at planting is where it starts but we want to manage that, that crop throughout the season as well. Um, which one of these two products really depends upon what crop you're growing, uh, what planting conditions that you're planting into. Is it the first field that you're planting into? Am I pushing the envelope a little bit on the soil temperature side of things? And then ultimately, what does that growing season look like? Um, what's my average season? Do I have an environment that I know is going to get hot and dry? Uh, am I in an environment that tends to stay a little bit uh, more ideal in temperature for the crop that I'm growing? Um, and if you look at these two products, BioForge Advanced, BioForge Advanced tends to be more of a defensive product in, in handling and tolerating and building that plant to deal with stress. And Fortified Stimulate Yield Enhancer Plus, on the other hand, is more of an offensive type play where we've got really good growing conditions and this thing can take off and just push and accelerate that plant as well. So when do we uh, want to use these? So and, and what are these products? So BioForge Advanced is a, uh, applied as a seed treatment. It's our patented uh, stress management technology. It is a combination of our traditional BioForge technology, 
uh, uniquely formulated with uh, micronutrients of cobalt and molybdenum. And those two are selected for very specific reasons of what they can do, not only for the plant nutritionally, but for a nutritional feed to the soil rhizosphere around that seed. Um, so when would we want to use BioForge Advanced? Well, their typical recommendations are going to be early planting or into cold soils, um, stressful growing conditions. So if your typical season tends to be one of, of more stress than, uh, than not, uh, would this would be our go-to product. And then on all legume crops, uh, you know, legume crops work, uh, you know, if you think about the cobalt and molybdenum aspects of this particular product, they really help uh, to energize the plant. And when that plant has more vigor and energy in it, um, what we see is a plant that demands more uh, nutrients and specifically nitrogen. And so it's not uncommon to uh, dig plants out of the out of the soil and see a you fifty know, percent increase in nodulation uh, and nodule counts that are on the root system uh, where we've got BioForge Advanced uh, applied. As a researcher, I always go back to the data. So I mean, and I, and in the data that I'm going to present here, it's all focused on yield, but we've we've collected data that, that looks at uh, root growth differences and nodulation differences and, and, and different measures. But as, as producers, I mean, this is, this is what pays the bills. So always come back and see where we're at with respect to our yield. So in our soybean trials where we've had uh, BioForge Advanced applied at two ounces per hundred weight as a seed treatment uh, over 30 locations here, uh, we've seen a 3.45 bushel per acre increase. Uh, and that is fairly statistical uh, and consistent just about anywhere we put this product uh, on soybeans. Uh, now, as a, from the grower standpoint, it's a low investment with a phenomenal ROI on it. Um, and you can see that coming up with about a 30 to 1 return on investment. But what do these plants look like? Well, here's a, a photo that was sent in uh, from our sales team here just recently. Um, with BioForge Advanced applied as a seed treatment. Now, this was a little bit later planted season than what we traditionally would have. Um, however, it's been stressful in the fact that we've had a lot of excessive soil moisture throughout the growing season so far. Um, but what do we see? And this is, we'll see increase in, in leaf counts, increase in, in leaf size typically uh, because of that increased vigor. Um, Remember, we, you know, with that vigor comes more root hair and fine root hair development. More cytokinin comes in from those fine root hair development. And we see more branching developed as well. I've looked at a lot of different seed treatments through my career, and, and I can say the BioForge Advanced is, is one of the only seed treatments that I've worked with that you see this type of architectural uh, enhancement uh, in a plant uh, with something applied as a seed treatment. The other thing you can notice here is, is uh, if you, you look closely, you'll notice the inner node distance because we're managing the nitrogen within that plant with the molybdenum that is uh, a component of BioForge Advanced. We see less of a nitrate effect. We actually shorten those inner nodes up and uh, the plant is, is, becomes more productive as a result of that. The other thing that we've seen is because of this vigor, uh, we see an early flowering and pod set develop, and and uh, not to overlook it, if you look closely at the stem, we typically see a, a, a stem that is more erect, has greater standability to it, um, and just overall thicker stem as a result. What about small grains? So what I'm sharing here is some barley research that we've done over the last... Uh, two seasons, 17 and 18 here, uh, up in uh, our northern, more northern environments, um, North Dakota, Idaho, Montana, and in that area. Um, and here we've got uh, about a 7.1 bushel yield advantage over uh, the untreated uh, across these locations. Uh, this is pretty typical of, of what we see out of uh, a small grain where we've got uh, BioForge Advanced applied from a, from a grower standpoint, we're seeing about a 16 to one return on investment 
again, the, it, our, our recommendation is still the two ounces per hundred weight. And what we see is obviously we've got more weight that we're planting. So we've got a little bit more investment on this acre uh, than we do on a soybean acre necessarily. What do the plants look like? Well, pretty well in, in terms of uh, overall growth. We see more vegetative growth. We've run NDVI numbers on this and uh, we, we get a much, uh, it shows up in those numbers very, very well. Um, because we're pushing this plant and, and, and increasing the overall vigor, we see more tillers typically. We'll see more seeds uh, get up out of the ground and be productive. Um, the dark green color is, is, is commonly associated with uh, the type of response we see from BioForge Advanced as well. Um, and then if you look at the stem, I mentioned stem quality in uh, with the soybeans. If you look at here, uh, at, at this particular photo, we can see the untreated really have kind of a curve and a lean to them. With the BioForge Advanced treatment, we've got a much more erect uh, and straight uh, stem that's going to help with standability and, uh, down the road as this plant progresses as well. Then we've got Fortified Stimulate Yield Enhancer Plus. Uh, and to talk briefly about this product, this is a four hormone combination of cytokinin. We've got two auxins in there, IAA and IBA, as well as gibberellic acid. Uh, what this provides is unmatched, consistent, reliable performance uh, in the field. We've seen uh, by this addition of the second auxin into our traditional stimulate uh, that we have a much uh, faster response uh, as it relates to uh, seeing the, the, the change in the plant happen very quickly. Um, where we would use Fortified Stimulate Yield Enhancer Plus what we see, uh, we're, we're targeting quick, even emergence. That is, is the gibberellic acid component I talked about a little bit earlier. Uh, gibberellic acid triggers that plant to begin germination. And if we wait on Mother Nature to provide optimal moisture and optimal temperatures, um, a lot of times uh, we, we tend to see some unevenness. This particular product will help even that out. We're gonna increase root growth and root development. That's what the auxins are there for. That's what they do. Um, and uh, typically we'll see about a, and root digs and, and weight measures that we've done, we've seen anywhere from about 40 to 50% increases in root weight um, as a result of applying Fortified Stimulate Yield Enhancer Plus as a seed treatment. And the other place uh, we recommend it uh, is on our corn and grass crops. Typically, that is this would be our go-to product for these type of crops. Um, now I'm talking about corn and soybeans and small grains largely here, but th this particular product could fit onto a, uh, a cotton uh, seed treatment as well, um, or or any crop really that you're growing. Um, it, it, it works extremely well to help get that plant up and vigorously growing early and advance that root growth and root development. So what do we see in terms of the plant? Uh, the plant itself, um, this photo is a side by side. I kind of boxed it out a little bit to, to uh, make clear distinction between, but what you can see from Fortified Stimulate uh, applied here as a seed treatment is we have more evenness of plants. Uh, they all emerged at the same time. Um, Typically, if you've got delayed emergence, you're going to have some runt plants or small plants out there. The other thing that you'll see is, uh, is apparent to me anyways, is a darker green color. Uh, that dark green color is, is indicates that we've got more root growth underneath this plant. We're picking up more of the nutrients that are in that soil more quickly. And as a result, this plant has more available resources to really push its early development. Um, and in general, just overall, vigor and, uh, and and growth is what we'll see out of uh, uh, fortified stimulate applied as a seed treatment as well. Again, coming back to the data here uh, that we did 
through independent research last year. Oh, I, I guess I should have said that all of the research data that I present here is all independent research done uh, through uh, other companies, uh, research companies, university researchers, and, and things of that nature as well. So here we've got 58 replicated trials on corn last year with a 2.73 bushel yield advantage per acre. How that comes back from the economic standpoint, we're looking at about a 20 to 1 return on investment uh, to the grower with this. Again, our typical recommendation of fortified stimulate is two ounces per hundred weight of seed. So as producers, we have many decisions to make. Adding a biostimulant to your seed treatment, I hope what you picked up today should be an easy decision to make. Um, from getting that plant's genetic potential right from the right from the get-go and ensuring that it's it's not we're not losing it uh, the potential that we've purchased in our seed right out the gate bioforge advanced is proven consistent under virtually any condition but especially in more stress-filled conditions and environments it is our go-to recommendation for legume crops fortified stimulate yield enhancer plus is proven to consistently deliver even emergence, increase root development, root growth, and improve overall plant performance. It is our go-to for corn and grass type crops. So again, yield, quality, and profitability is what we're targeting and in trying to ensure that we have the plant set up for right from the start by applying the right seed treatment to our crop. And I Thank you for your time and attention, and I see there's a whole series of questions coming through, so I will look at uh, some of these questions and try to answer some of your questions. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much, Rob, for, um, for speaking to us, and we do have quite a number of questions, so we're going to try to get to all of them in, in our last 30 minutes of the webinar. Um, if you haven't asked your question yet and you would like to, uh, please go ahead and type those into the chat box and we will answer them as we go along. Um, okay, Rob, so our first question of the day. Um, so years ago, products we now refer to as biostimulants were often regarded by farmers as kind of snake oil and they were really dismissed. Do you still see that stereotype or is it a thing of, a pa of the past now? Oh, I would say it certainly is still a stereotype that's out there. Um, I, I think what we've, we're transitioning in is this, uh, as, as we become more in tune to what's going on in our field, we're seeing that we are having responses. Um, and sometimes those responses come back as yield, sometimes they don't. And, and that's really, I think, where the snake oil um, nickname if you will came from um and and it was the fact that we had this response in the field by adding a biostimulant but it didn't come across as yield and when we look at uh whether something works works is a is is a horrible word in my opinion <laughs> because works is so open to interpretation you know a lot of times when somebody says did it work or did it not well did it turn into yield or did it not and um, so are we moving past that? Yes, we are. Uh, and I think it, it comes back to the fact that, that we, uh, we see the plant response and we know that Mother Nature, just because we set that plant up, she doesn't always allow for us to, to capitalize on that in terms of yield, but we certainly see a plant response from it. And I think if you look through time, I think our quality and uh, quality control that we've developed as an industry in this particular arena of, of product types really uh, really helps to to ensure that what a, what a producer is purchasing and what we say and, and, and claim it's going to do is actually happening in the field. Great, thank you so much for that. Um, now, one of our next questions asked, um, what kind of negative effects can be seen when you use too much GA? So this is crop driven to some degree. So different types of crops will have different different responses. But if you think about plant hormones, gibberellic acid, cytokinin, and, and auxins, um, 
And I'll focus on, on gibberellic acid and cytokines largely because if you think about plant cells and the way a plant grows, it really has about two, two ways that it grows. It can either grow through cell division or it can grow through cell expansion. Now, cell division is driven largely by auxins and cytokines. Cell expansion uh, is driven by gibberellic acid. Now, it takes that expansion in order for that seed to break that seed coat and begin growth, which is why we need the gibberellic acid in there. Um, but too much gibberellic acid causes too much expansion. And we've seen in, in, in fields where we've, we're pushing the limit to try to, in, in research trials, I should say, not fields, but where we're pushing that limit to try to see what happens when we have too much. A lot of times you'll see a plant that just kind of winds up on itself uh, as it's growing and does not have the strength to push itself up out of the ground very effectively. Or if it does push itself up out of the ground, instead of that cotyledon being an inch or inch and a half off the ground, all of a sudden we've got a stem that is four or six or eight inches long with these tiny little leaves at the top. Well, you get any type of uh, wind or anything and, and a lot of times that'll fall over. So I, I think when you start working with plant hormones, uh, you really have to have an understanding of what that hormone is going to do uh, because if you know what it, how it affects the plant, you'll know that pushing and putting too much of it on can, can be detrimental. But that's why we have research, right? We have research to, to show that, you know, and, and develop products that have the optimal rates and optimal inclusion amount needed. And then that we use that product at the optimal rate uh, on any given crop. Okay. Are there any concerns about toxicity with biostimulants? Um, well, depends what category of biostimulants you want to refer to. I mean, if you think about micronutrients, um, too much of anything can be bad, right? Um, so, you know, again, coming back to when, when a company develops a product with the micronutrient combination in it, I mean, we want to ensure that we're applying enough, but we're not applying too much in our recommendations that we do have, that, that we ensure that we have a positive effect, not a negative effect. Great. Thank you. Um, are there any synergis synergistic effects with uh, foliar nutrients? Um, Okay, so are we talking foliar after seed treatment or are we talking, I guess I'm not fully following the question. That is a good, uh, good question. <laughs> let's let's hard, say hard, after this. hard part about typing, right? <laughs> yes, but let's say after the seed treatments. Let's go ahead and do that. So, so again, I mean, we're talking about seed treatments here today. But really, if you look at our approach at Stoller and, and, and our approach as growers, I mean, we need to manage this crop through the season. Um, the seed treatment sets it up. The seed treatment, we have the ability to affect all three components of yield. And the one that goes away right after the seed treatment is the plant density, really. Um, so really the seed treatment's targeted at ensuring that we've got this plant up out of the ground, vigorously growing, that we get every seed possible uh, that's going to germinate to be productive. Um, following that up with a foliar program, uh, really helps uh, ensure that what we, we, we've built from the start continues to build and continues to, that we, that we actually capitalize on, um, on, on our, uh, what we set up with the seed treatment. And I'll take, for example, um, you know, if you look at our programs that we built with Stoller, our seed treatments, I showed you data here that, that ranged, uh, you know, from three and a half bushel on soybeans to seven on small grains to, you know, about two and a half on corn. Now, if you put a program in place that you, you support it with foliar nutrients, you know, during the early vegetative stages through reproduction, you ensure that you have, uh, you do something nutritionally towards the end that can really push seed size as well. I mean, we can ensure that what we set up as a seed treatment is realized. And what we'll see instead of these, uh, you know, uh, three to seven bushel type uh, increases, when we start supplementing them with a program afterwards, all of a sudden we're seeing 15, 20 bushel potential increases depending on what crop you're talking about. Um, you know, I, one of the, I, I just came from a field day yesterday, so some of this data is fresh in my mind, the barley data specifically. 
Um, you know, our seed treatment in barley with BioForge Advanced has shown, uh, you know, about that seven bushel yield advantage. Our program, which would be, you know, foliar nutrient and biostimulant supplement after, now we're now we're knocking on, you know, 13, 14 bushel right in that range. So following up what you set up with a seed treatment not only ensures that you get everything you can out of what you paid for with the seed treatment, but it ensures that you get the most genetic potential that you can out of that seed. Okay, great. Uh, we are, let's see, this one is about one of the graphs you put up for uh, BioForge. So you showed yeah. this great BioForge piano graph. Yeah. Um, and this person wanted to know what the break even in dollars per acre or bushels were before the ROI kicks in. Okay, so if you look at, and I'll use MSRP as the pricing point, our recommendations are uh, for, for both of our seed treatments, Fortified Stimulate and BioForge, are two ounces per hundred weight. Um, BioForge will run you just shy of about a dollar an ounce. And if you planted a 140,000, we'll call that 50 pounds of seed. That's one ounce, uh, 50 pounds of seed per acre. That'd be one ounce of BioForge per acre. So you're really investing, you know, probably less than a dollar on that soybean acre. Now you go and you plant 100 pounds of barley and, you know, now we're closer to that $2 per acre from an investment. So it, how many bushels it takes to repay that, you know, a tenth of a bushel in soybeans, maybe, uh, you know, half a bushel in barley, um, in corn. I mean, there you're looking at, uh, you know, fortified stimulate, a much lower investment, probably talking about, you know, 40, 50 cents an acre for an investment there, uh, depending on your seed population and seed size and everything that way too. So seed treatments to me really become no brainers to add a, a biostimulant to because for pennies, on a dollar of what you actually get back, I mean, you can ensure that you're not losing the genetic potential you've purchased in that seed the day you plant it. Great. And uh, can these seed treatment biostimulants supplement chemical seed treatments as well? Uh, replace, no. Supplement, yes because they typically are a, an, an add-on or a bolt-on to your standard fungicide, insecticide, inoculant type treatments that you would be using uh, already. So they're not a replacement for, they would be an, an, an add-on to. Okay. Um, sorry, I lost my place on my question list. Um, how can we manage against the negative effects of ethylene? <laughs> ethylene is produced from cells that are damaged or dying, right? And ethylene is a gas that is given off and it affects and damages its neighboring cells. Um, you know, if you've ever seen a, a field that you see an area start to uh, die off or prematurely ripen, and if you watch that field uh, over you know, a week to 10 days, you'll see that area start to grow. Well, that's ethylene in action, essentially. So you've got that area that's died, it's giving off ethylene and it's affecting the, the neighboring plants and that area is growing and growing and growing. So how do you manage that? Um, you're gonna manage that through uh, a multitude of, of methods. Uh, one is through ensuring that you've got uh, a strong, vigorous, healthy plant. Um, Cytokinin, uh, from a hormonal standpoint, can help manage ethylene and, and keep ethylene in check to some degree. Um, you know, the whole ethylene cycle itself, if you look at BioForge Advanced, uh, that is our, our, our abiotic stress management product, there are actually three modes of action in there that, that work within the ethylene cycle in three different places uh, to try to first, you know, reduce the amount of ethylene, try to block the reactive oxygen species uh, from, from producing uh, that stress uh, effect in the plant. And then ultimately we've got some minerals in there uh, that, that have the ability to block certain components in that cycle. 
So, so you know, from an abiotic stress management standpoint, I mean, Bioforge Advance is our go-to product. That's why we say in a stressful environment, we want to put that on our seed. In a stressful environment, we like that product applied foliar one or two times throughout the season as well. Great. Um, now, this is actually two questions that I've combined into one question because it's all based on on where we can uh, locate these products. But are your products from Stoller widely labeled and registered across all corn, ba uh, corn belt states? And also the second question added on, is this product available in Thailand? <laughs> First, the easy one, Thailand, I'm not sure. <laughs> uh, it's a developing market that, that uh, we were working on. Um, I'd, have to, I'd have to get back to whoever asked that question with an answer on that. Um, is it registered uh, in the U.S. in the major corn production areas? Uh, actually, Bioforge Advanced and Fortified Stimulate are registered in, I believe, just about every state uh, in the U.S. in the low 48. Um, so, I mean, it, it, those two products are available just about anywhere. And as far as where you can get them, we've got a dealer network. If you go to our website, um, we've got a, uh, a lookup where you can find our sales rep for an area and they can point you in a direction of one of their dealers, depending on what part of the country you're located in. Um, can you qualify consistency of effect? versus synthetic chemistry on these products. Yeah. Can you run it by me again? Yeah, and if this one's too hard, we can skip it. Um, can you qualify consistency of effect versus synthetic chem chemistry? Well. <laughs> They're asking some good ones today. Um. I guess it depends what you're calling synthetic chemistry. I mean, if you look at uh, the the plant hormones that we've got in uh, stimulate, for example, or fortified stimulate, um, they're a biomimic, mimic, and basically what that means is they're they're hormones that are found naturally in a plant already, but we are manufacturing them in a fashion that uh, they don't. Uh, there's no variability uh, in in it. So what what you're getting is what's there and we've actually about three years ago developed a formulation that allows uh, greater stability to uh, this particular product as well so that the hormones that are in there have not degraded that they're as good today when they are bottled as you know if you happen to get some product that was three years old that product is is going to be the same exact product um now you there, there are other areas of um biostimulants that uh, I'll just say there's a little less consistency in, in some of those type of products and partly because of, of the sources and how they're manufactured uh, to some degree. That's not to say they're bad products, um, but when you're dealing with something that's a live organism, whether it be a microbial or, or a seaweed extract, for example, they're coming from uh, live uh, sources and those live sources inherently just have some variability of consistency in them. So um, I think that's been the biggest, biggest problem maybe with biostimulants in general in the category is just finding that consistency. And at Stoller, uh, we've got a great chemistry team that that uh, quality control is, is their number one priority. And uh, so ensuring that we have very good performance with every product, not just these two, but every product that we send out the door. Now let's talk a little bit about the soil microbiome. Um, yep. Another person wanted to ask what the impact these products will have on, on the soil microbiome. So you know, I, I, PGRs in general or plant hormones in general, they're, they, I always view them as the uh, the language translator between the plant and the soil itself. Um, you know, so that, that's kind of the crosstalk between the two. Um, and so that's how they can have an effect. And, and, and soil microbes use the hormones that a plant naturally produces. It kicks into through the root exudes 
um, they use those those hormones to determine what nutrients uh, they're going to sequester and actually bring available to that plant. So they're utilized in that fashion. Uh, if you look at uh, Bioforge Advanced, for example, if you look at the, the that product has cobalt and molybdenum in them and from a trace element uh, micronutrient standpoint, um, cobalt uh, in the in the plant it's energy, if you will. It, 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 uh, if you think about the animal world, it's a component of cobalamin, which is a component of vitamin B12, and B12 energizes. If you've ever taken in, in uh, energy supplements, um, uh, you, you'll, you'll often find that in there. Well, cobalt is a component of that. Well, the soil microbial uh, rhizosphere is just teeming with microbes small animals, if you will. So cobalt has the ability to basically fertilize uh, our soil life. Um, if you look at, there's research out there, scientific papers that would show that uh, earthworms utilize cobalt. And one of the things that I noticed a, a year ago uh, when we started doing a lot of root digs where we had Bioforge Advanced in furrow, we noticed a proportionally higher number of earthworms in our in our shovels full of dirt that we pulled out well that's what led me to trying to figure out what was going on i think it all ties back to that cobalt aspect of, of what we got in there it's fertilizing not only the plant but it's fertilizing the soil as well um what is the role of a microorganism on enhancing seed and plant vigor so depending on i mean there are all sorts of different micro uh, microorganisms out there um, as it would relate to enhancing plant performance. I mean, there, there are microbes that will fight disease. There are microbes that, uh, you know, help fix and, and, and make available nutrients that otherwise wouldn't be. Um, as it relates directly to the plant itself and with hormones, there are, there are microbes out there that have the ability to produce PGRs in the environment that they're in. So uh, they can, they produce these, these hormones uh, that a plant could then use uh, for added growth as well. Now this one goes back to the products again. Um, what is the dosage for each of your products? And they gave examples for crops like corn, alfalfa, small grains, and cotton. Okay. So our, our, our standard recommendation, and we make it pretty simple for both of these products, uh, is two ounces per hundred weight of seed. Uh, now your small small seeded crops like your alfalfa and, and like canolas and things of that nature, um, I would caution you if, if you're a farmer trying to mix it up yourself. Through personal experience, I've, I've, I've tried this. Uh, you've got to figure out a way to dry that seed after application. Um, and, and with both of those, and a lot of times the small seeded crops have uh, a, a, a coating around them. Um, that's to help uh, get moisture to help them germinate more evenly uh, in the springtime as well, or a planting, I should say. Um, you know, a question that I had actually posed at our field day yesterday is, well, if I put it on the outside of that, do I see the benefit of it? And I said, well, the reason that coating is there is to pull moisture. So it's going to, as it pulls moisture in, it's going to have a tendency to pull along with it, whatever we've coated on the outside of that seed as well. So um, that helps. But yeah, our, our typical our typical rate is two ounces per hundred weight, almost irregardless of seed type. Okay. And then now about storage. Mm -hmm. How long um, can seeds with, uh, I, I assume this question means biostimulant seed treatments, be stored? So as long as you get the seed dry, um, you could probably store these. I mean, if you look at the stability, I mean, we guarantee Bioforge Advanced and, and Fortified both to two years, but we've shown stability of our Fortified Stimulate beyond five years. So our guarantee would be two years that, that we can see uh, the benefit with those two products. Now, I will say uh, we do work with some 
my, microbials as well in uh, not in the U.S. market, but in, in some of our other parts of uh, our company throughout the globe. Um, and with those, a lot of times we want to see those microbes applied today and planted today or within the next 24 hours at, at the longest. Um, you know, so it really depends on what category you're working with in terms of, uh, you know, what type of biostimulant are you using? And that's why I would follow whatever the manufacturer of a given product claims or tells you, uh, follow those directions or, you know, if you want to see the best results from those products. Okay, thank you. Um, now, someone asked, um, corn seed is primarily treated at seed plants and not on the farm. Yep. Um, are seed companies okay with adding these biostimulant products to their seed? And have they done their own compatibility testing? So it, um, that's probably the biggest challenge as it relates to corn. Uh, a lot of companies uh, will say that, you know, we want whatever we put on that seed. And if you put something else on it, we're going to void our warranty on it. Um, so from that standpoint, it kind of can be restrictive. Uh, and uh, you've kind of got to decide if that's something you want to do or not. Now, I will say in the last three to four years, I've seen some seed companies loosen that up a little bit and say, you know, we have no problem with this product or this product if you want to apply them. Um, you know, for, um, it, it's a changing uh, environment uh, right now uh, as to, especially as, as we're working with biostimulants, is it something that they're going to allow or not? Seed corn has been the most restrictive and understandably so. I mean, uh, soybeans, small grains, cotton, a lot of those are, are uh, a little bit uh, easier to get a seed treatment put on. Uh, I will say from growers uh, that have seen the benefit of adding it onto seed corn, uh, they just go and treat it themselves over the top of what's already on that because they've seen significant yield gains from having it there so but yeah perfect thank you so we talked about corn just now we're going to jump to soybeans mm -hmm. um so this person asks one of the issues with soybeans is low soybean crude protein which uh is a, mm -hmm. they identify as a quality issue yep um can these products improve protein disposition in the seed so if you look at how we measure the components of our seed, it's all on percentages, right? So if you're gaining something, you're giving up something else because you'll never have more than 100% within that seed. Um, with that being said, if you want to try to make protein, and, and I've been researching, uh, it's more of a foliar approach than, than necessarily a seed treatment approach, but um, from an, uh, a mineral standpoint, molybdenum seems to give a very good response as it would relate to the, the uh, protein content of that harvested grain, um, at least what I've experienced with it. Um, and that makes sense because if you look at what molybdenum does, it manages the uh, nitrate reductase enzyme and, and the nitrogen cycle within that plant. And obviously protein is nitrogen. So if we manage that more effectively, it, it would be conceivable that we should see an increase in protein where we've got adequate molybdenum in our in our cropping system. So. Okay, I think we have time for just one more question. And it's actually a question that I'm combining two questions into one again. Um, now, so we're seeing a lot of PGRs flooding into the market from China, um, and we're just seeing an overall growing abundance of biological products, I think. Um, how can we know what is a good product and what's a bad one? And do you happen to have um, any words of caution against um, or about these imported products? Um. I wouldn't necessarily knock on imported products or anything of that nature. What I would say is, is find a company that you trust to work with. Um, don't just buy a generic uh, uh, PGR powder from, from wherever um, and, and think that it's going to work the same. I mean, companies like ours spend a lot of time developing quality products. 
And it is the formulation of these products that really make them perform. I mean, if you were going to take, for example, just some cytokinin and some auxin and some gibberellic acid and throw it in and think that you're going to have the same type of response that you're going to get out of, say, Fortified Stimulate, for example, you're just not. You know, that formulation is, is so critical to ensuring that, that uh, not only do we have a quality product, but that that product performs in the field. Um, I mean, I run into growers all the time, and, and I'm a farmer myself, so, so I, I understand where they're coming from. And you look at a micronutrient product, you look at the label, and it's this much boron and this much manganese and this much zinc, and it's like, well, I can buy it and I can put it together myself. Yeah, you could, you could match the nutrient components of the label, but what you're missing out on is, is the technology that's used to formulate these micronutrients to, to improve nutrient uptake, you know, improve absorption and, and, and overall response that the plant will have to them. So um, don't think that you, you can cut corners and, and try to shave a cost and expect the same type of response from a, a quote unquote, I'll call it a generic product, if you will, um, because, because you just don't. Um, I mean, that, I, I've seen that through my own experience. So, but yeah, that's, so, so always, always, ensure that you're picking a, a reliable, trustable partner uh, that you're buying products from, somebody that's got a, tr a proven track record. I mean, if a company popped up, you know, last year and you're hearing about them, I mean, maybe they've got something good, but I've always trusted in a company that's been around for a long time. Uh, 2020 will be Stoller's 50th year uh, in business, um, working with micronutrients, when micronutrients were really the sink oil of the day, uh, we're working with PGRs starting in the 90s. That's been viewed in the same type of category for a long time. Um, no company survives 50 years if this stuff doesn't perform. And, and there's a lot of components that go into ensuring that we've got quality and performance uh, and ultimately improve farmers' profitability at the end of the day. Well, perfect. Thank you so much, Rob. Um, I think that's about all the time we have for today. So I'd like to give a big thank you to Rob for joining us today and for Stoller for making this webinar possible. And thank you to everyone who joined us and participated. And I hope you found this information of value. Um, again, a recording of this webinar is going to be available later today at seedworld.com. And thanks again. And we hope you all have a terrific day. This is Alex Martin of Seed World signing off.